Hello, I'm Barbara De La Harp and I'm the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Business, Education, Law and Arts here at USQ. Today um, I have Professor Shelley Kanash, who's the Director of Advancement of Learning and Teaching here at USQ, with me in the studio. Thank you, Shelley, for uh, joining me in the studio today uh, for this On the Couch session. It's absolutely lovely to have you here with us. Um, I'm certainly looking forward to hearing what you have to say about sharing and creating a distinctive um, learning and teaching profile that's going to help people get awards, win grants and be generally successful. So to start off, Shelley, I'd like to um, ask you to share with us the main pieces of, of advice you have for academics who are seeking promotion. Thanks, Barbara, and it's lovely being here with you. I always enjoy a chat, and this way we get to have a nice focused <laughs> chat on one of our favourite topics. So um, I think I'd like to emphasise three points. First off, your application uh, for promotion is your story. And, and we can't forget about it as a story. So I think sometimes we're a little bit too truncated or we're answering the sections or the... But there's no cohesion or a narrative that mm. runs throughout. We need to find that golden thread that tells our story throughout the document. And we can see the, the people on the panel get a sense of who we are and what we stand for and what difference it makes that we are here at the university working with the students and preparing the graduates. So make sure that there's you know who you are, what is your distinctive profile, so that that profile comes throughout your application. The second thing is to make sure that in each section, first off, a, a minor piece of advice, use the wording of the application. So the panels are reading many, many applications, and you need to remind them, this is the same advice I gave to my kids going through school, <laughs> feed it back. Make it easy for the teacher to see that you've done what they've asked you to do. It's the same thing with application for promotion, where you need to go through and see what questions have they asked you, feed it back, the response in those words, and then provide evidence, evidence, evidence. So you need to show them as well as telling them. So how do we know that you've been successful in that? Um, further to that, when you are giving examples of um, service contributions particularly, so committees that you've served on, roles that you've had um, in the institution, make sure that you don't just stop at naming the role. Tell us what you did in that role and what was your particular contribution. Tell us the so what. Why did it matter? How did it help? What distinctive contribution did you make? Oh, Shelley, that's absolutely excellent advice. Get your narrative, get your evidence, and, and be outcomes focused. Um, thank you so much uh, for sharing that with us. In your um, title, you've mentioned creating and sharing a distinctive learning and teaching profile. How important is that, and, and how do you do it? So when we go broader and we think about the university, there's not a single university that doesn't have a strategic plan. So why does a university have a strategic plan? Mm -hmm. It gives focus, it gives direction, it's shared communication so that we all know where the ship is heading um, so that they're not all just bumping out against each other going at odds. We're never going to get there if we don't know where we're aiming to get to. And it's the same for each of us as individuals. So we need a personal plan. And our learning and teaching profile is our plan. It's our mission. It's our direction. It keeps us grounded and focused and heading in the direction that we want to go. It makes sure that we're having impact. Then the second part of your question, I would say, is why is it, first, why is it important to have a profile? And second, why is it important to share that profile? And it's not just about ego. Mm. I think sometimes people think that, um, well, it's too egocentric or self-focused to um, have, uh, you know, to share my profile out there. It's, it's just for big fat heads. <laughs> and, and that's definitely not the case. Because if you're willing to share your profile, you're willing to stand up 
and say, this is important, and we need leaders in this space, you then become a shining example, inspiration um, for other people. So um, to turn it to myself, um, one of the things that I've been, uh, that I talk a lot about is employability. And it is really, really important to me that universities keep their eye on employability. And how do we nurture that within our students so that our graduates are able to graduate and either make or take a fantastic career mm -hmm. upon graduation. And so I have purposely shared that through social media, through uh, conference presentations, through publications, etc., because I want the rest of the world to see how important this is. So if I stand up, I become a delegate or an advocate for something that I hold um, true and dear. Oh, Shelley, again, uh, having worked with many academics, that's the bit they find so hard. You know, put your um, tall poppy syndrome out of the window and stand up and, and, and be prepared to, to shine and, and uh, share how great you are and the good work that you're doing. But, gee, I, I think academics do, do find that, that quite difficult. So good advice. Get, get out there to do that. In terms of sharing your profile, your personal uh, best in terms of how you've had it out there and it's been the most successful, what medium? Yeah, so I, I think that um, you need to triangulate, just like we do in research. So uh, when I attend a conference, I'm really active on Twitter. Mm. Um, and I use the hashtag that, that, that the conference is mm. using. So that we're really having that back channel conversation and really processing this and attending to it deeply. Um, I make sure that my LinkedIn profile is very up to date. Mm -hmm. And then I'm active in LinkedIn. So you'll see that I've you know, put posts about this event today so that people can take part and join in and have this conversation with us. Um, I also make sure that I keep contact lists and I, I reach out to people in email regularly. Mm -hmm. So the projects that I've done um, for the National Australian Government um, um, Office for Learning and Teaching, which is no longer, um, mm. but I, all of those projects, so whether on graduate employability, postgraduate student experience, higher education student evaluation, I didn't do those alone. They were all very multi-institution. And that's because I'm always reaching out mm. and um, keeping uh, track of my colleagues. Who's doing what in this space? Let's play together. Mm. Let's have greater impact by doing this mm. together. Um, another example, I've, I'm absolutely um, chuffed and honoured to have been invited to lead um, through the STARS uh, conference, which will be in Auckland, New Zealand this year, um, to lead um, what's called 10 STARS. So it's a brand new, the employability network. So it's an international network to promote employability. And so that in itself, and they all sort of interact and, and counter mm -hmm. so that um, we're tweeting about that and inviting people to join. And then we'll share out the public Applications that that I have and that the colleagues who are active in the employability space have. So you want to just um, use the affordances of our current digital world and get it out there as much as you can and keep that conversation going. Mm. Oh, I, um, again, I absolutely um, resonate with everything you've said and um, social media just is something that I think you just cannot ignore anymore. Um, as an academic, so great advice again, and lovely example of how it's got you into another role and has put you in New Zealand and, and really benefited uh, your your career and making it very distinctive. Um, now, often when I'm working with academics on promotion, it's a very emotional journey, and and uh, they really struggle and and find it very difficult, and it's also um, sometimes very challenging, and the the stakes are high, and it's quite competitive, and success rates are not always that good. How do you keep yourself going when you may not get that award that you've put in for, or the grant that you've put in for, or the promotion? Yeah. What advice have you got for people around that? So I have a few pieces of advice. The first one, um, so I'm a parent. I have a son and a daughter who are now launched. Um, my daughter uh, is um, in university and is an elite athlete. So I was going to say what year she's in, but I'm not quite sure because <laughs> she has to navigate that around her sport. Mm -hmm. And my son's in his first year of engineering. And um, when so when I was a parent with young children, you know, I read all the parenting books I could put my hands on. 
And the one I loved the most um, was one, uh, I can't remember the author, but it's how to, how to listen so that kids will talk and talk so that kids will listen. And that advice, that parenting advice, has stuck with me throughout everything I do. Um, and so, you know, I think great parents make great leaders. And um, the advice was not to take away people's emotions, to sit with people's emotions. Because mm -hmm. so often, you know, particularly as a parent or a manager or um, as, a, as an exec dean, I imagine, you know, you feel people's pain mm -hmm. and you just want to make it go away, mm -hmm. right? And so you're so quick to jump to, and I'm not saying you personally, mm -hmm. but I know with me, when staff come with me and they're upset, I want to fix it. I want to make that pain go away. But I think the first thing is to acknowledge it sucks. <laughs> it hurts. It sure does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this, so you need to sometimes go away and lick your wounds for a while mm -hmm. and, and live with that pain because you don't mm -hmm. want to become bitter. Mm -hmm. And if you just try and, you know, stuff that pain down too quickly, you need to have mm -hmm. a good cry. You need a bucket of ice cream, you know, <laughs> um, and, and together with somebody who loves you mm -hmm. because you can't overshadow this and use this too much as, mm -hmm. gee, I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? The other thing is to know that you're not alone. I've been rejected um, lots of times. Um, I, I, you know, I don't want to make any guesses, but I imagine that you haven't been successful in everything that you, <laughs> that you... Absolutely. Absolutely. If you look around the university, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find mm -hmm. anybody mm -hmm. who has been successful mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a journal paper that you really wanted in, whether it was a grant that you really thought mm -hmm. was fantastic, mm -hmm. whether it was academic promotion, um, whether it was a job you really wanted. Um, and so um, some people become bitter, some people leave. Um, the, the, the right thing to do is to um, get on with it, feel your emotion, know that it hurts, um, mm -hmm. but be resilient and agile and carry on. Mm -hmm. And then when you do something that gives you strength again. Mm -hmm. So for some people, it's going mm -hmm. to the gym. Mm -hmm. For some people, it's eating that bucket of ice cream. For some people, it's having a tree bath. Um, you know, whatever the, whatever the case may be. And then go to a trusted um, person, like an executive dean, and get some good advice and say, what can I learn from? And then listen to that advice. So it may be you need to um, supervise more doctoral students, you need to write more Q1 journal papers, you need to focus on your teaching, whatever the case may be, mm. and grow and learn mm. from that. Oh, again, really sage, wise advice from somebody who's done it and, and, and been there and um, what, what good words for people to take away from. But being kind to yourself, I think that is something that is just so important uh, in these times. So thank you, Shelley. Uh, those are the uh, questions I was wanting to explore with you today. It's been lovely having you here and uh, thank you for being so open and honest with your journey and things that really matter and giving us fantastic advice to ensure we have award-winning careers. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Barbara. <laughs>